Hey guys, welcome back to Scraps or Bust. In this third video, I want to share two of my favorite ways to use up little bits and pieces. Um, this is kind of like coloring on, on images with fabric and, and yarns and beads. It is my scrapplique method that I um, came up with and I quickly touched on when I did my segment with the quiltshow.com. So I'll share a little bit more detail on how I work the fox for this piece here. And this background piece I shared a lot of different ways of needle felting different things into a piece of scrap batting. So of course star members of the quilt show can watch this episode for free in its show 2507. I want to go through with you is a little felt bag that I made with a mess kit which is the bigger version of the mini mess kit that I shared in the Blair Stitch Project video I did on Halloween. So the mess kits are now available in my Etsy shop in a few different colorways. And this is the prize for the three lucky subscribers who have taken a moment to comment on any of the scraps or bust videos. I'll be giving three of these particular kits in this colorway shown here at 12 noon Mountain Standard Time on December 29th, which is a Sunday, the last Sunday of December. I'll go live and I'll pull the names of the, of the subscribers who have commented on any or all of the videos. And I'll pull that, of course, out of a gypsy satchel. So please chime in. Let us know what you're working on. Say hello and get yourself entered into the drawing because that is four chances to win. So I also just quickly want to share with you how I store and travel with all of these little scraps that I've accumulated from all the projects that I worked on. So I keep um, six plastic bins. Um, I think they're like nine by 14 inch bins that I dump. Um, all my little small light color fabric scraps. So I've got like one for purples and pinks and one for browns and creams and then one for yellows and greens. Um, this one here is the orange and red colorway that I'm going to dip into to make this fox. So then when I travel, I get, I, I have this larger eight part bin and I just grab a handful of each colorway and fill each compartment up so that I have a good selection when on the road because it's I never find I don't need these huge bins with me it takes up so much space so I just carry a little um, little bits of everything and, and this is my favorite way to play I mean you can make the most amazing projects little art pieces that um, that really tap into your creativity and be resourceful when you are working with just this little bit of materials. Um, and I love that. I love to challenge myself in that way. And so for the beads, I use small Yazzie bags. Um, they're so durable and they have a million compartments. So this little green one I carry, I just grab and go. It's got my Delicas in it that I keep with uh, my beading needles and scissors and beading thread. And then I've got this larger one that I carry all my seed beads in you know, crochet hooks, because I use these seed beads for making Oya and crocheting with beads. I carry my bugles and my crystals. And then when I work, I sit on my bed, you know, in my Airstream like a teenager, and I have all this stuff spread out all around me, and I've got this cutting mat in front of me, and that's what I work on. And the cutting mat I use has the pressing service, so I just flip it when I need to press anything out. Of course, if you're a normal person, you could sit at a table and do this too, but I just, I'm a big uh, floor sitter. I like to sit on the floor and just like play. Um, still a big kid that way. It's worth the time to take to go through your, and it's kind of fun to see what you have too, because I'm sure like, if you're like me, you've got a stash of stuff. You don't even remember what you have because it's all in bags or it's, you know, put away. So I find that the, it's a valuable time to spend um, sorting through all the little color scraps that you have and yarns and threads that go with and that way you've got a resource to pull from when you just want to make something really quick and easy and on the fly you know, when you want to create and, and make some of these pieces so um, so anyway let's get started I want to start with the fox I want to show you um, how I went from finding a picture that I liked on the internet to this piece of scrapplique here 
And what I did was I just Googled a fox and then, you know, hit at the top of the bar, hit images and just kind of scroll through until I find a picture that I like. And in this case, I found this guy. So this is my iPad I work on all the time. You could definitely print this out and do this with a Sharpie too. You don't have to have an iPad and all this stuff to do this, but this is just how I design. So I imported it into this app called Procreate, which I use all the time. I love this app. I'm going to create a new layer so I can just show you how to I draw on this. So I'll be drawing on this layer. I suppose I could do a whole video on how to use this app too, but I, I just kind of learned myself. I didn't really know what I was doing, but, the, but Procreate is just the, absolutely the best designing app. Um, and they they have a pretty decent tutorial and great support, so I highly re recommend this app. But basically, this is my Apple Pencil, and I'm I, I'm just gonna draw the outline of him. Whoop, that's way too kind of funny. I'm gonna just draw his outline. Just the thing I love about designing on a on an iPad is let's say I screw that line up. I can just hit with two fingers and just get rid of it. It's just a really, it's a quick, easy, fun way to design. And, you know, just draw the outline. Anywhere you see a line, you draw his foot. Obviously, I would be a little bit more careful, but this is just for demo. All right, and just draw even, you know, wherever you see the color changes. You know, and you can just keep, just keep playing with this. All right, and then when you take the other image away, you can see you've got a pretty good outline of this guy. You know, and, and again, you can, if you were going to do this on with pen and pencil, you would just print out your image, put a piece of tracing paper over it, and then draw over the the lines on the tracing paper. That way, you have your photo reference and your outline. So this is what you would have. So what I did then is I printed this out and then looked at my photo and then assigned the colors. Assigned like orange, you know, white. Here I'm not going for too much detail other than orange. You know, I'm going to work on the fabrics with these and you know different different fabrics and different colors. So this then you'll want two copies of this because this becomes your pattern and the other printout is going to be your actual pattern where you're going to cut these out and use these as templates to cut out your fabrics. I made this on Pelon, a really heavy fusible interfacing called Pelon or Peltex. I've been playing with 3D pieces and um, thought it's kind of fun to just sort of have these. I might do some mobiles. I'm working on some hummingbirds as well. But essentially, whatever it is that you're going to do this on, trace the outside of the image, the fox, and then cut it out. So stabilizer, you can actually do this right onto the fabric. Um, this is just an example of what I'm working on, these, these 3D um, sort of stand-up pieces. Make sure you have two of these patterns because one is going to be the one that you're going to refer to and then one is that you're going to actually cut the pieces out and use these as the templates for your fabric. So here I've cut out the tail piece. I'm going to find the fabric that works best for the tail, kind of a darker orange, almost going into a brown. Put the template upside down on the wrong side of the fabric. Trace it with a Frixion pen and then just cut the piece out. And I cut it just on the outside of the line just so that I can layer them so I don't see any white pieces show through. Um, so go ahead and cut that out just a little bit bigger than the line and place it on your template. Now, even though I've got a fusible product, a fusible template, I'm not gonna fuse it here because it's so hard to stitch through. A couple dabs of Roxanne's glue based it will hold that in place while you work. Now that you've got the tail established, you can use a few more pieces of fabric just to get the tail 
just to get the tail a little bit more detailed, you know, and this is where you can kind of play. It doesn't really matter what the shapes are. Cut a few different fabrics out. Every seam is going to get couched over with yarn, so um, just keep that in mind as you're placing your fabric. I'll do three here, and just play with the placement. And I like this one. This kind of looks almost like fur coming down. Um, and then once you've got the placement that you like, just glue those in place. And then continuing on, you're going to cut the next piece of your pattern. Um, and you can see like this one, I've got the orange and a white. And I find it helpful just to work with one or two pieces at a time. You know, place them in place while you're choosing your fabric so you kind of know where you're going. Okay, and then, you know, I know this this is like his leg, so I'm going to do like classic fox orange. Put the fabric on your surface with the wrong side up, of course, with the solid color like this. It doesn't really matter. Always place your pattern upside down onto the wrong side of the fabric. You can use a chalk pencil, whatever will show up for you. And then again, just cut it just outside the line. And then just place it, and you can put it, you know, the tail's going over his leg. Put a few dabs of glue on. And then replace the template with the piece of fabric. And since the tail's going over his leg, we're going to just kind of tuck that in behind there. And that'll work out. Okay, and then I'll find a white, a kind of whitish fabric for that. Once you've got all of your pieces in place, this is what you're going to have. So he's already starting to look like a fox. You know, it's really not that difficult. Just follow your template, trust in the template, trust in the pieces, and just sort of layer them in, in uh, collage form. It's really fun. Then just take scraps of orange, brown, white, gray yarns, and we're going to couch this in place. So have the the end of the yarn coming off the piece a little bit, and we'll tack that down later. And now I've just got a needle and thread, like colored thread, and I'm going to couch it every 16th of an inch or so. Um, when you go around the yarn, I'm basically almost going in the same hole that I'm coming out of. You know, we're just trying to get that seam covered and get a little bit more detail, some outline for this fox. So just come up. You could even stab through the yarn a little bit just to hold it in place. And then just go back down in the same exact hole. You know, close to the same hole that you're coming up. When you reach the edge, you're going to whip stitch this in place. Um... So just orient the piece so that it's easiest for you to hold it. I'm coming up through the background, about a 16th inch away from the edge, a 16th inch away from the previous stitch. I'm going to take the work around the yarn to the back again, and then just come up again. Just think, Oh, I said a sixteenth of an inch, but that's not what I meant. An eighth of an inch, not a sixteenth of an inch. This is all about an eighth of an inch, just to hold these yarns in place. You could do a one sixteenth. That would really lock it in, but an eighth is plenty. Okay. When you're all the way back around, then you're just going to stitch that in place and cut the excess yarn. Okay. Every seam will get a yarn. You can decide whether it's orange, whether it's the gray. I don't do both, you know, I either choose. Here's a sweet little yarn for his little furry back. I love this one. In his tummy, I'm gonna do gray, white, kind of fuzzy yarn. I chose to do like a kind of a mohair angora blend for around all the white parts. But in but each seam only gets one. Like I didn't do a white and then an orange right next to it. You could, you totally could. Um, I didn't think it was essential. I just chose whatever I thought was sticking out, like his belly, you know, around his face. That's fur that's sticking out, so I chose to do the white. And then up here where his cheeks are, I stopped halfway because I knew that the that I want to outline his face with a darker brown. So 
so I just took a, a brown, uh, I think this is a size 5 pearl cotton embroidery floss and left about an inch and a half of a tail and then picked up where I ended up stopping with the orange yarn on the top of his eye there. And just make a few stitches just to get that locked in place right there at the top. You can go through the thread and you're about to shape his eye. Throw in a few stitches. Take the tail and then come back around and shape his eye. Here, you know, make sure it kind of comes to a point up here at the, the outer eye and stitch it in place and then just have the tail come down the nose just a little bit and then you can clip it. And then take the main yarn again and just on the side of where his the, the end of that previous thread was, just stitch it all the way down all along that little cheek part that you placed. And then just stitch it really tight where you're in a spot where you know you're gonna clip it. Put a few extra stitches in and pick up the yarn and then just clip the end. There you go. Then pick the yarn back up on the other side. You know, and really, really stitch it in where you're going to start so that you can clip the end and you know it's not going to unravel. So pick up the 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 uh, thread as well. See how I've, I've stabbed through the thread. And then just use your needle to manipulate where that outline is going to go. And of course it'll go along his cheek and the little fur along his nose. And again, an eighth of an inch away, just keep stitching up, or up and around. And follow that little pattern and just keep referring to your pattern as far as the placement um, and trust in that. You know, it's, re it's really not that difficult. You can see there's a little space between his cheeks and his eyes. So don't bring the bottom of his eye down all the way to the cheek. Just keep referring to your photo. Once you have the uh, eyes established, I took a size 8 pearl cotton and I, I did satin stitch to fill in the eyes. Of course, you could take a black piece of fabric, sew that down. Um, I just chose to satin stitch here and I filled in the entire space because as you can see here, he's starting to look a little creepy with that manic eye look <laughs> there. So get that all filled in. Make him less creepy. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like once you've got it all filled in. And of course, it, you know, to bring an animal to life, you can throw in a little bit of a highlight in his eye. I liked him far away, so I just left it black um, for the piece that I was doing. But in this one, maybe I'll, maybe I'll add a little white stitching highlight. So for his little nose, He's got white patches in his cheeks and his nose. I took a scrap piece of batting, cut little shapes, and then placed them right under his eyes there on his nose. I took my needle and I put some white uh, sewing thread on it, used that to manipulate the shape of these pieces. So here I'm just sewing on the his little mouth piece there, manipulating the shape of it because I know I want to place his nose right up in the at the top of it, and just throwing stitches here to lock that down and to manipulate the shape. Alright, throw in enough so it's getting secure. And then to hide the stitches, it's great because you can just run your fingernail over it and just scratch out the stitches and it'll sort of puff up. Okay, and then just do the same thing for the cheeks. 
and then take your black again and satin stitch a little nose. Just come straight across so that you have a little square nose. And this will be sort of sitting right on top and into his mouth, the, the white that you did for his mouth. Okay, and then just a small little detail here. I'll do more on the nose, but just to just to show you. Small little detail, we're gonna put his little um, mouth in there. Just a straight, short dash line under his nose, and then a horizontal line will do it. And he's just a somber, sweet little gentle fox sitting in the woods. That's how I picture him. Okay, go back and finish his eyes. And then you've got this great little piece of scrapplique that you can put anywhere. Um, you can even put it on the bag that I'm going to show you next rather than doing the monogram letter. You can put him on the bag. You can put him in a um, a shadow box or like in this art piece that I did in this woodsy little place I've got him sitting up okay so here is this little scrap bag that I've made that I use quite a bit the alphabet you can find um, at annemyriequilts.com go to the Crosscraft Sundays page and you can download a PDF of the entire alphabet that I just drew out for you once you download that PDF, you can manipulate the size. This size here is printed out just printing a page from that PDF. Now, in your printing settings, you can print at a certain percent. So if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you know, print it at 120%. If you want to make it smaller, print it at 75% per se. Um, and once you've got the printout and the letter size that you like, place a piece of stabilizer over the letter and trace it. This is Ricky Tim's stable stuff. Um, you can get stabilizer anywhere. This is not a fusible product. It's just a piece of stabilizer that we're gonna use for our template in turning our fabrics. Cut out your stabilizer and put it on your background. In this case, I've got an eight by 10 uh, inch piece of felt, wool felt pin this in place okay and then just start cutting or finding little shapes place them you know we'll start down here at the corner place it so that you know you have a quarter of an inch seam around the template because we're gonna fold it under the template and stitch it in place okay so just pin that establish your creases by folding the fabrics over the template. If you have too much bulk, just be aware of where your template is and cut the excess fabric off and fold it under the piece. I've got a needle threaded with green thread, although the color of the thread really doesn't matter here. Normally you would match thread to your applique, but in this case, we have we're going to be doing so much embroidery over it that you really won't even see the thread. So, so we're just doing the classic applique stitch about an eighth of an inch apart, going down directly across from where you're coming out of, go into the wool felt and up through the fold of your applique. And really you only need to be concerned with just the few stitches that you're about to do. So you don't have to pin this in place and turn it all under ahead of time. Just turn it as you go. and just hold it in place while you stitch it. It's pretty relaxing. Okay, and so you just work yourself down into the corner. And then just keep folding and turning as you go. And at this point, you can probably take that pin out. Okay, looks like I've got some extra bulk here so let's trim that really it's best if you just if you can work with a fourth of an inch beyond your template that's just a little bit easier to manage these pieces are pretty small and hey if you don't want to fold them over you don't have to 
you know, like I said, we're going to cover the seams anyway. I really like the look sometimes of folded applique, so just for something different. When you have a an arc clip the tops of the fabrics and that'll turn under a little easier and give you that nice little concave arc. Fold it down. And then just continue stitching along. You can tuck any extra threads, clip any extra threads off. Again, this is such a great way to practice needle turn applique because it doesn't have to be perfect because we're covering the seam anyway. So. Just continuing along up the seam. get to the corner that's kind of a rounded corner so we can deal with that with our needle as we go once you have the the piece all done and obviously we're not going to fold under the top of that green piece because we're going to cover it with a new piece of fabric so you really only need to fold under and stitch under the places that are going to show this new piece of fabric so you just I'm going to place it here I know that I'm not going to have a quarter of an inch on that right side you can see I'm right up against that fabric so I know I'm gonna need to turn it around that just wasn't a big enough piece so now if I turn it and fold the bottom of it under that can lay along the top raw edge of the green I'll pin it in place fold the sides under and then just can continue on with the stitching you know clip your excess fabrics beware of your thread be aware of where your template is before you do this and then fold them under and stitch them in place you don't always have to fold it under the applique like the next piece that I'm going to place on top of this purple piece I know I'm not going to be able to fold under you can fold it and place it on top you're not always you know I'm not necessarily catching the template piece underneath there I'm just using it as a guide to to know where I'm folding my fabrics under after you do your crazy patch applique, you know, and fold over all the edges and just hand stitch it on. It doesn't really take that long. Maybe it took me about an hour and a half. This is what you'll have. Um, so all the edges are turned under, so you don't have to worry about any fraying. But it's really nice in, in crazy patch work to put a treatment on every seam, meaning an embroidery treatment. You know, you can couch yarns, um, add beads, and just do classic embroidery stitches. So that's what I'm going to work on this week. And then next week I will bring this back at the beginning of the fourth and final video in the Scraps or Bust series. So in my first one, um, I just want to talk through a few of the things I did. Now I'm not going to show you how to embroider because I do have an embroidery video that you could definitely check out. And maybe you have some embroidery books that you haven't picked up in a while and might be fun to just try some, some new stitches. But um, here along this edge, I just laid a piece of yarn and I couched it with embroidery floss. Right, and then I made X's along here, this seam here, and then put a bead in the center of every X. Just did some stem stitching along here. Just couched. This is just a, a stem stitch, half of a fly stitch. This was polka dot fabric, so I put a French knot in every polka dot. Um, some more fly stitch. This is a this is just a, a back stitch, but then I wove yarn back and forth between this, so it looks like almost like ribbon candy. The fishbone stitch. Let's see what else did I do. A lot of blanket stitching. Here's a blanket stitch where I did beads on top of every post and then a little lazy daisy on the other side. So just play with those and, and use the threads and yarns that are included in your kit or that you have found um, just by going through your studio. And then once you have all of your treatments on, you can take the rest of the yarns and the threads and just make little um, embroidery gardens. 
For an example of this, go back um, not only to the embroidery video I, that I did, but also to the A Little Birdie Told Me pillow. I can't remember off the top of my head which one it was, but there'll be a description under the video. And it's where I did built these um, build-a-bouquets on the corners. And that kind of gives you an idea. But basically, I mean, I, you, I, there's no really logical place to start. You just start filling in, you know. I did like this, the satin stitch leaf here. And then I did, you know, a fly stitch coming down. And then once you have that on, you start to kind of think, well, what can I put in these spaces? You know, here's a couple of um, pink French knots and then decided to do the lazy daisy flower on those. Um, the, the plume stitch with the ribbon yarn. And, you know, just worked different things, bringing out the colors of the piece that you've done. Okay, so I'm gonna work on that this week. And also, here's the back of the piece, and I thought this fabric was so darn cute, I had to have one of her on there. So I think on the back, I'll probably just fold these edges under and just do a needle turned um, little doll. And then um, I did some leaves here, and my plan is really just to, to do some applique with some of the leftover fabrics and then do a, a night, you know, maybe follow some of the patterns in the fabrics and then do some embroidery coming up to the um, applique pieces. And then to finish the bag, basically for the rest of the fabrics, piece to get piece them together in any sort of way that you want to to make an eight by ten um, piece of fabric that you can trim up, and then just you know stitch the side and the bottom. And then once you're done with both of your felt pieces, put those right side together, and stitch around, turn it right side out, place the lining inside the bag and then just stitch it closed on the top so you can kind of see an example of the lining I did here and I just think that the, the inside is just as cute as the outside I love that and that's why I included so many fabrics in your kit um, so it's really really simple to do just the just make two separate bags place the lining inside fold the quarter inch under on both pieces and just hand stitch it in place and then, you know, on the back of this one, of course, I did the mosaic. I just took some extra pieces and just sort of cut them to fit them together. I could do some stitching in between here, and maybe I'll still do that. You never know. Uh, but this bag has served me well. I carry my paints and my Derwent Ink Tense pencils in a journal, and it's just perfect to fit in here. So I know that when I want to go sketching or, um, you know, journaling, I just grab this bag, and, and that's what I use this for. So... I hope you found these ideas useful to use up some of the scraps that you might have. Um, again, please comment. I'd love to hear from you. It is so much fun to, to see you guys come through and, and just to be able to communicate with you I think is really great. So enjoy your scrap busting, your scrap organizing, making little things out of little pieces. We'll see you next week for part four of Scraps or Bust. Until then, have a great day.